This next one is titled, Can Star Citizen's Gameplay Really Support Ships Like This? And it's uh, talking about the Banu Merchantman, but it was a really, really uh, clicky title thumbnail, which is like, are Star Citizen ships too big, kind of? And it's from Obsidian Ant, so I'm kind of curious what he has to say. So let's check it out. Star Citizen is full of a... Pepe laugh. I think um, if you guys are subscribers about the Band of Merchantmen, uh, they, they show way more in-game art, and it looks normal. There. It looks like the Band of Amazing Merchantmen. Amazing ships. The game's ultimate goal is whatever activity you want to it undertake, looks like a sneaker, there will true. be a spaceship to fit the role. From combat to exploration, from mining to trade... Yes, the game is down. The most recent ship video from CIG, then, is a walkthrough on the current progress for the Banu Merchantman, one of the game's largest ships. It's impressive, to say the least. So, uh, everybody that's popping in now, I'm, I'm watching videos and stuff because the game is down. There's really nothing to do. Um, mods, if you don't mind, can you just... I guess anybody who asks if the game is down, can we, can we spam them? You'll have a multitude of functions. Ramble, and we're gonna watch as it. always, with this game's ships, it is extremely well designed. This ship's design, however, belies a number of important and concerning questions. One of these especially stands out. Whilst big is generally impressive, just how big oh, is yeah, too big? Oh yeah, mods can do announcements, right? Now, size has always been important when it comes to sci-fi. The Imperial Star Destroyers in Star Wars are a display of power and strength. Thanks, Elby. Meanwhile, Star Trek's Enterprise is a physical manifestation of human ingenuity and the drive to discover. I mean, that ship, the Star Trek Enterprise, is like a an entire city, right? It's like a... The For me, the scale of Star Trek ships is... I, I never quite could get a feel for the it. The Battlestar Galactica huge. perhaps best represents humanity's sheer determination. And EVE Online's Titans are a sign of great accomplishment. How big are EVE Online Titans? They, I mean, based on the little, you know, those are supposed to be rooms. Like incredibly huge, right? But what about Star Citizen's Banu Oh, stay Merchant safe, Buckilla, and more. Well, the Banu Merchant Man is a sign of great wealth. Whether that means the real world size of the player's bank account, well, I'll let you decide. Now, actually, no, that doesn't need to be left as an open statement. Real-world finances certainly do play a huge part here. But even still, when it it's comes to wow. in-game, in fictional logic, it's fair to say that Star Citizen's largest ships are in the same league as all the iconic ships from sci-fi greats. The Banu Merchantman does pretty much everything. It's a base of operations built at huge scale. It has markets, medical facilities, trade operations, fast, perhaps unrivaled cargo capacity, as well as room for vehicles, ships, and a large crew. So you said per perhaps unrivaled cargo capacity? Uh, Pepe laugh, he doesn't know about the the whole C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Um, I can't believe it, but when you, when you look at the Band of Merchantmen and saw all that cargo, and then think about how many, or how much cargo some of the other ships hold, you're just like... How is that even possible, right? Because when you looked, I, I, we've never seen anything like the Banu Merchantman cargo hold before. Oh, and of course it's also well armed. As with all of Star Citizen's large ships, the Banu Merchantman can be flown by a lone player. However, in the hands of a single individual, it's more or less useless. The ship is the designed is and just built unnecessary. for huge groups. Yeah. Now, in some ways, it can be viewed as a guild house a faction base of operations. Of course, that's not the best way to describe it, far from it in fact, but it's also not a terrible way of describing it. The recent developer walkthrough then of the current progress on the ship gives plenty of insight on what to expect. It also highlights the immense amount of work that CIG put into each and every one of their ships. It's at a level of detail and complexity that is completely unrivaled when it comes to other games out there. Bigger so, means okay, better. The Banu Merchantman currently costs 720 real-world US dollars. 
It's a huge sum of money for any in-game purchase, regardless. It's six hundred dollars. That's with his tax included where he lives. So the base price is six hundred. It'll it'll differ depending on where you live. Of what it actually allows you to do. Now, of course, you will often be told that many of these ships, all of these ships, in fact, are purchasable in game through gameplay. Well, that may. Um, Salty Mikey is right though. The CDE can't make planet fall, so in a way, the Bannon Merchant is kind of unrivaled. Fair enough. Will be true, but the amount of time they will have to put in to achieve this will be significant. Maybe players will instead group together to purchase these ships. Who knows? And then again, maybe CIG will see the light and will stop selling ships once the game is fully released. At least that's what they once claimed. Either way, at any rate. The Merchant Man is far from Star Citizen's largest purchasable ship. The UEE Javelin is three times the length of the Merchant Man, and with an original real-world price point of $2,500, it's also more than three times the cost. How much cargo Meanwhile, can the Javelin hold? Meanwhile, focused purely on ship size. The 890 Jump is 210 meters long, the Carrack is 126 meters long, the Reclaimer is 155 meters long. How does that compare to the Merchant Man? Well, the Merchant Man is 160 meters long. At any rate, when it comes to spaceships, yes, generally speaking, bigger is better. However, that brings us on to the real meat of the question. What do these huge ships currently do in Star Citizen? And if we can't satisfactorily answer that, what will they one day be able to do in the game? So we'll know that Star Citizen is currently in development. Right now, you can jump in on the Alpha build, which as I've said before, gets plenty of regular updates. You can also try out some of the larger ships yourself, either if you can find someone in game that has one. Alternatively, you can try out the ships if you wait for a free fly event. And there's also a third potential method here, you can always rent the ship using in-game currency, which you have to earn in-game. But to that question of what can you do with these ships, well, the CIG say they have future gameplay plans, which include deep space exploration, salvaging, trading between star systems, and much more. Oh, but now sorry, though, I was muted. just how players would currently use the Banu Merchant Man in Star Citizen remains a bit of a mystery to me. But of course, many people will want to use it as a base of operations. They want to use it for group activities with their organization. But as to how it fits in the hierarchy of current gameplay, well, that one is difficult to answer. I mean, the the thing about ships like this is I don't think there's... The, the current hierarchy of gameplay is not, and I surely hope it's not, the goal for the game. So there's some ships that you look at and you're like, how does this fit with the current experience? And... I think the idea here is how does it fit with the near future experience? And if you're going to have more players on a server, I think a ship like this is kind of cool. It's a, a meeting place, but yeah, it, it just, I think in general, trusting people on your ship is a, is a, a weird thing in star citizen right now. And the band of merchantmen is supposed to be a ship you're, trust other people to join and buy and sell stuff to you from so it's kind of weird but yeah fortunately then it's not a question up, that needs to be answered just yet firstly because there's no current release date for the ship secondly because there's no release date for all the gameplay that the ship would require ultimately then as with many things started but Given that they're working on it now, unless this ship pushes player-to-player -player trading forward, there is zero point for working on the ship. Other than to sell a more expensive ship and make some money. It isn't related. It's all about the game's future. What would one day be possible? It's a laudable goal, although not everyone agrees with the way it's been achieved, or even if it can be achieved. For now though, a lot of Star Citizen Pyro players are content maybe. to watch the development unfold and see where it all goes. 
And really, there's nothing wrong with that, just so long as visible progress is being made. I admit though, I have a lot of questions that perhaps go beyond hauler, the scope obviously. of what I've already discussed. For example, CIG discussed the Banu Merchantman's meeting room, where so-called high-level trade discussions will occur. So I but we can't trade! Assume this will be for roleplay purposes. Or if not, will these negotiations be NPC connected or player connected? If player, what in-game economy or systems will underpin and support those negotiations? In short, what will even be traded at this so-called high level? Okay, okay. Well, here's the deal. I think like things like this can actually sort of happen now, but um I'll I'll try to give a, a higher picture view at this, a high level positive view. Um if anybody knows that meme, but the the way I see it is uh there's a few pieces that are in motion at the moment. You have inventory that came in and you have shops that you could buy and sell directly to and from spaceships as well as local inventories. But a lot of those shops are limited to what they sell. So certain shops sell certain things and obviously there's certain ship components and items and things like that that are in demand all around the system but are only sold in a certain area. What if, as reputation comes along, reputation unlocks certain items that you could purchase that others cannot? And what if you want to use that reputation to sell to players in a place like Pyro or sell to players that don't have that reputation? You can buy it for 1000 sell it for two, whatever, right? I'm just saying there's... I'm... I, I'm Listen, you guys can spam imagine all you want. You can you can you know put the things up on the TV and make fun of me. But every single one of those aspects of the game are in development currently, have been actively worked on. The only issue is is that these guys never ever put things together. It's all separate Lego pieces that never get connected. So do I believe that will happen? No. But that's what I see the meeting room for. That's what I see. Like, I don't think it's just role play. But... Wow. The ships built in marketplaces are also interesting and noteworthy to me. Elite Dangerous has done something similar with their fleet carriers. Here, players can buy and sell commodities. It's an interesting addition to the game. However, it is problematic in many ways due to the severe limitations on how Elite simulates its economy. Bottom line, the game doesn't really have an economy in any real sense of the word. EVE Online then is a much better example of a game with a real economy. Yes, Here, definitely. Players Eve regularly is organize trade at huge real. scales. This works because every item in the game has a real place the BMM is within mostly the a blockade chain. runner according to concept lore stuff. So I kind of feel that a ship like the Banu Merchant Man but to have... But, but the thing... Okay, at least the thing about the Banu Merchant Man that sold me on it had nothing to do with any blockade running or anything. It was that little mini mall that's inside the ship. A true place within the game, then Star Citizen would also need a true scale economy to support it. Theoretically, this is where Star Citizen's Quanta system will come into play. This, this room in particular. CIG claim it will be capable of supporting and simulating physical NPCs along with their movements, cargo and tasks. The Quanta system will also control and dictate the game's mission generation, and these should be related to and interconnected with other aspects of the game. True. In short, it's CIG's way of simulating a living and breathing galaxy, one with the persistent NPCs that have physical tasks to carry out. It's the foundation then of what could perhaps be considered a true economy. Now at this point, it's still debatable just how extensive all of this will actually be. And we won't be able to accurately judge it until CIG have fully implemented it. Either way, that, Quanta is and just- And that's the thing that he hits on, fully implement it. But have they fully implemented anything? Not yet. One aspect, and an important one of that, of all the background elements that would ideally be required to support a ship of the scout of the Merchantman. 
The same can also be said for expedition ships like the Carrick and the Odyssey. The larger the ship then, the more laser focused its design, the more detailed and extensive its associated gameplay will need to be. And that kind of brings me to an answer of the question of how big is too big when it comes to spaceships. The answer is pretty straightforward. A ship is too big once it has grown beyond the scope of the game that is capable of supporting it. Whether or not Star Citizen has fallen into that trap or eluded it, only time will really tell. What we do know right now- I think time is already to told in a lot of ways. Don't you? How many times have they said- Remember the, the uh, Board the Idris minigame that was going to be in Arena Commander? But then the Idris outgrew the scope of the game. And then all you have to do at that point is what CIG always has done, which is simply move the goalposts of where they feel the scope of the game should be. Yeah, capture the Idris. That was the name of the gameplay. And that's what CIG has done for years, is just continue to move the goalposts and say, you know what? The Banu Merchantmen... The, just the way it is fits within the scope of our game now because we have plans for all this fantastic tech that is going to make it so we can have these ships in game. Well, I'm still in the I'll believe it when I see it mode. I don't know where you guys are at, uh, but the fact that we're fighting against Indris and we're fighting against the Javelin or whatever and that they still don't have any interiors and they're still not something that people, you know, people spend thousands of dollars on and still don't get to use. I would say that they are with outside the scope of the game, although we still don't have the technical features of server meshing PES, uh, whatever the uh, culling of the interior exterior thing to make the big ships work that they've kind of always talked about. It, it, it leaves me in a, like a, it leaves me sitting on the fence going, are they being malicious or are they just you know struggling to do the things that they think that they could do but if they do them it'll be really good like it, it's hard so it it feels like a weird place because you want to keep giving it a chance and you want to see them succeed but you've watched them fail for 10 years essentially and it's it's not easy however is that the game's spaceships truly are fantastic and the tour of the panu merchant man is no exception. That then brings us to an end of this video. The servers are As down, always, yes. thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Well, thank you, OA. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was good. That's just how I feel about it is, um, you know, our, our ship's too big. It's, a, it's kind of a tough question to answer still because CIG fully believes that they're going to be able to do these things. I don't think we're ever going to get uh, Eve style space battles, but that's never been the scope of the game. I don't think like there are people that come from Eve that want, um, the largest battles possible. Right. But I don't think that they ever stated that they would do anything like that. Right. I don't think they ever alluded that there would be so many people fighting all at the same time. At least not, I've never felt that way, but I think Jumptown's a pretty good example of, uh, I think it did get a little messy, but we also had a lot of desync problems and stuff back then. So it would be curious to see per server performance and all those things uh, with the upcoming Jumptown event, and we'll see what happens.